up? Speako here and welcome. Welcome to the live cast. Ah, what's <laughs> up, Spawner? What's up, Saturday night? And welcome. We, uh, <laughs> this is the most, um, this is the most, uh, oh, the sound is low. Hold on. Hold on. I'll change that right now. I'll change that right now. I figured this is going to happen. Okay. Give me a second. Okay, how about now? Does it sound good now? What about now? Does it sound good? Yeah. Is it sounding better now? What about now? Please let me know. <laughs> the thing is that I've added a couple of filters. Okay, the thing is that I added a couple of filters into the... Um, you see, in, in, in slobs and also in OBS, you could add filters. So I added a couple of filters and there was one compressor that I added at the end, uh, but that one might have made it sound it a little too low. So uh, yeah, I compl I saw it and I noticed it when I was doing Prey. I thought it was maybe something that I could get adjusted, but uh, but now, uh, is does it sound now how it used to sound or? All right. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Different? Okay. See, now I have a little more... See, I have a little more... Uh, I don't know. I add a little more uh, gain to it, so now it's it's sounding now. It's weird because also there's issues with room tone as well. But anyway, um, we'll adjust. Uh, we'll adjust in time here. But anyway, uh, the live cast is where we uh, the fecalicious community <laughs> the fecalicious community um discuss the things that are happening in the gaming world and we sit back we talk we react and we have discussions uh and if my room tone doesn't bother you <laughs> um yeah uh, then i'm sorry i am in a bigger apartment and the voice is gonna bounce around so whatever so today we have a very special presentation because today we're going to talk we're going to watch the number 12 trending video on youtube and that is the nintendo direct this is from a few days ago 3 8 2018 and last time we reacted uh, that's why I'm doing it earlier, so that way we have time to both watch it, discuss it, and also talk about other things that happened in the last couple of days in gaming. So that's what we're here to do. So if you guys like what you see here, give me a follow here on the stream. And if you want to know where all my social media links are, they're below, down in the description. So you can check them out. And uh, right now, I am... <laughs> Are you serious? I'm getting pinged by my boss. <laughs> uh, okay. I um, think I might need to answer this. <laughs> Hold on. Um, give me one second. Uh, sorry to bother you. Yes, this is this is gonna take a second, guys. Hold on. <laughs> This room, I'll be right back.
my lord Jesus. Okay, we're back. <laughs> All right, so, okay, well, uh, tomorrow I am going to be streaming still at my regular scheduled time, but instead, I, instead of doing stuff I need to do in the morning, I guess I'm working tomorrow. Ah! Getting some more OT. But anyway, what we were saying before we were, uh, we were, uh, okay. Yes, that's right. The stream, <laughs> this thing that I'm currently doing right now. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, just uh, jump in uh, because uh, we've already wasted enough time already. So we're gonna watch the entire 34 minutes uh, Nintendo live cast, and don't worry, we are gonna do this the same way <coughs> when E3 comes around. So. We're gonna watch those. So let me uh let me see. If this is I, I hate bumping into this thing, so Alright, so let's begin. Begin Ooh, the presentation is at 60 frames per second. Yay! Hi everyone. The time has come for today's Nintendo Direct. I'm Yoshiaki Koizumi. And well, hello, Yoshiaki Koizumi. This is the guy that was uh, that was doing the the thing with the ice cubes with the controller when he presented it the Switch the last time. He was doing. Uh, wait, wait. We have one marble. We have two marbles. Now that's the guy. <laughs> and I'll be your guide. Well, hello! Hi! I have lots of information to share about upcoming games for Nintendo Switch and Nintendo 3DS. Up first, some Nintendo 3DS headlines. Ooh, we're... that... that's... the console is not dead! It's not... it's not dead yet, guys. 3DS... totally still a thing. It's the biggest collection in this microgame series. The latest in the WarioWare series is coming to the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. Ah, okay. Which means there's a new way to play Wario's strangely satisfying micro games. With classics and new additions, there are 300 micro games what? to enjoy, making this the biggest entry in the series. Press buttons. I actually played those Build games before. Use the touchscreen and microphone. I've actually played these games. These are hilariously kind of fun. I I can't I cannot deny it. the WarioWare games are very very fun. Only Wario could come up with this many control schemes. Think fast. What playstyle is required for this one? <laughs> Better figure it out. You saw there that you could actually hump the ball and dig that crazy yeah. action while it's hot. Hey, some familiar characters are rocking new looks. This is the most jam-packed game in the series yet. Just look at that face. Even Wario can't contain his wicked grin. Uh, WarioWare <laughs> Gold launches August 3rd. Why so late? Oh, okay, maybe it's because they're retooling the games. Get ready for pulse-pounding post-apocalyptic races and battles. Oh my god, are we gonna see Fallout? Fallout for the... Wait a minute, is it post-apocalyptic? Is it Fallout? It's Fallout for the 3DS, right? Race down enemy Grocks and rock them in battle to- Hold on. <laughs> You're not seeing the names. Dylan's Dead Heat Breaker. Defend Frontier Villages. Okay. Yes, sir. Action meets tower defense in Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers. Wow, this time, look the at Red that Flash stuttering. himself, Dylan, will team up with your own animalized me character. You get it? He's called Dylan because he's an armadillo. You get it? He's Dylan the armadillo. Dylan, get it? Be strategic and use your whole team. What in tarnation? Your friends' me characters can join the team as gunners. Well, you'll need their help to face each wave of transforming monsters. Who or what will you and Dylan get tangled up with? Never mind that. There's an enemy invasion to stop, and a frontier in desperate need of some heroes. A demo version of the game will be available for download May 10th. Oh, there's a demo version for this on May 10th. This actually looks pretty cool. 
It's, uh, yeah, let me show you. Dylan the Armadillo in Dylan 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 Apocalypse will be available May 10th. The whole game, Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers, rolls into Nintendo eShop on Nintendo 3DS May 24th. I like that actually looks pretty good. It's pretty cool. But are on. the brothers and Bowser still better together? Nintendo DS classic oh, yeah. Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story is back for more gut-busting adventures. Oh. oh yeah. Mario more? and Luigi have been tasked with finding a cure for the Blorbs, a disease threatening all life in the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh my god, is it you're you're curing an infectious disease in the Mushroom Kingdom that are that are blowing them up into like balloons. But thanks to Fawful, both brothers have been devoured by Bowser. And so their journey takes them deep into the belly of the beast, leaving Bowser to scour the kingdom for the cure. The only way forward is to change between the bros and Bowser. Oh, the big that bad is cool. will even beef up for monstrous boss battles fit for a king. Take him down in this action-packed RPG. Wow. And uh oh, looks like his boy wants in on the action. Yeah, I know, right? Is they're making a they're they're bringing the games that they had on the older systems and they're giving them the new. Find out what happens behind the scenes in the untold story of Bowser Jr. When Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey launches in 2019. That's that will okay. Yeah, they're you know what these these games. They're fit to, I mean, if they're, they keep doing these over and over, it's, it's telling that I think that people are buying them. So, hey, if it works. Here's the really scoop cool. on Detective Pikachu, plus a new amiibo. Something about this Pikachu is a little different. He's gruff. You agree with me, don't you? Runs his mouth. No, he's not gruff. He's like Danny DeVito. Hey, don't boss me around. Likes coffee. This hi-hat blend is as delicious as ever. Why is he drinking coffee? Why is Pikachu drinking coffee? Why is Pikachu acting like an adult all of a sudden? And no one knows why. Oh yeah, me too. Welcome to Rhyme City. We're and also, I'm, uh, we're crazy about Nintendo games because uh, we grew up with Pokemon usually live in harmony. But recently, Pokemon have been behaving oddly and running amok. So there's a fake Luckily, a boy named Tim and Detective Pikachu are on the case, facing each mystery head on. What is oh, oh, oh. was that? Did I do it? Yeah. As of today, why the is game is okay. First off, why is Pikachu out of shape? And number two, why is Pikachu a detective? And number three, why is Pikachu talking? It's available for pre purchase in Nintendo eShop on Nintendo 3DS. Well, you know what? If uh, you would like to have a. Uh, mm, oh, yeah, but we can't have emojis yet, I'm afraid. Have to become an affiliate to get maybe one emoji, I think. Maybe. Crack the case with Detective Pikachu when the game launches March 23rd. Oh yay, in 12 days you get to hear a gruff old, old Pikachu hard-boiled Max Payne. Plus, keep your eyes peeled for this extra large Detective Pikachu amiibo figure. It, it looks cuter without the detective hat. And he, I would prefer the little one. I'm sorry. I don't like talking Pikachu. It's maybe just me, but. Which launches the same day. It's kind of stupid. I'm... That mysterious mansion has reappeared in the Nintendo 3DS remake. What? We're getting Luigi's Mansion! Really? We're getting Luigi's Mansion! Mario! Mario! We're getting Nintendo GameCube Classic Luigi's Mansion has been remade for Nintendo 3DS. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it got a new game and then it got the remake? Oh, but that is so cool, though. Uh, I Fans like this of the game. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon game can now explore the original mansion where Mario went missing. I really like this game. Luigi's something of a scaredy cat, but these classic ghosts and traps are no match for his vacuum cleaner. 
I Besides, actually... the mansion's map will be displayed on the bottom screen. <laughs> uh, that is cool. It's showing Luigi in the little in the little figurine like he was in like in the <laughs> in the Mario games. I like that there's like a ghost counter as well too. I played this game when the when the it says Game Boy Horror. I don't know if you could see that, but but if you look at it at the bottom, it says Game Boy Horror. Hold on. Oh, if you work awesome. up the courage, fight the ghosts of your past battles in the new Boss Rush mode. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion for Nintendo 3DS launches this year. So it doesn't look like they're doing anything new with it, uh, other than just like adding that, adding that map, I think. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, but hey, you know what? That's, that's pretty cool. I like, I like, really like uh, Luigi's Mansion. So... <laughs> You know, I'm happy everybody's getting That's it. all for Nintendo 3DS. Whoa, six minutes. And you're done with you're done with Nintendo 3DS. Okay. I guess everything from here on out is Switch and Nintendo Labo. So far, so good? Well, let's keep the headlines coming. It's time for Nintendo Switch. Here we go. Kirby can even make friends with those characters? What? Kirby Star Allies finally launches next week. As you fight through your adventure, you'll reach right. dream palaces where, surprise, even fan favorite legacy characters can become Kirby's friends. Well, dream friends anyway. When well, you're saving the world, it's not- I think it's because the Switch is really taking all of their time. Uh, I don't think the 3DS is gonna completely go away. I think they'll still be making games for it, but honestly, I, I do think that it, this is the major support because the thing is that Switch is now a handheld as well too. So what handheld would you prefer to play? If you had a Monster Hunter game that could run better on the Switch, why would you go back to the 3DS to play it? Now that would be cool. Like remake. nice to have some Monster heavy hitters Hunter on your side, the even the likes of King Dedede. Meta I don't think it'll run Monster Hunter World per se, but I think it may. I mean, it could do like we could get like a like an up converted version, like it, like the Wii U version of Monster Hunter Three Ultimate, and then make it four as and well I too. It could do it. And it's Bandana sure Waddle Dee. Ooh, you get you get Eventually, you get enemies. More dream friends will be added to the game via free updates after launch. Okay, see that is cool. Free updates. Uh, free DLC, uh, free content. The first update will include Rick, Kai, ah! Ah! I remember! I remember! Ein and Koo. These are from the Kirby games from the D- Oh, that's Marks. cool! Oh. And Gooey. I remember playing Kirby's Dream Land, uh, on the, on the, on the Game Boy. Kirby's Dream Land 2. The Switch has little downgrades a handheld compared to the 3DS. It has it's no like a dream come true to bring this ragtag crew of characters together from across the Kirby series. Kirby Star Allies launches on Nintendo Switch March 16th. Oh, just, and this, this is next week. Okay. And the first free update will be available March 28th. Oh yeah, a quick reminder. A free demo is available now in Nintendo eShop on Nintendo Switch. I actually Switch. have that what demo, else but I have not for? played it yet, so I don't know if it's good or not. Let me read that comment again. The Switch is a little is a little downgrades a handheld compared to the 3DS. Yeah, but nobody uses it. I mean, the 3D function is is moot. Nobody uses it. I mean, it's cool and all, but it but I mean, it's it's I'd never use it. It's just it's and it's completely optional. You could still play your games anyway. But but you know what? It, it is a cool function, and and I do like it when uh, when it's used in games. But... An epic tale returns with new artistic touches. Oh! Okami, oh! the grand adventure oh, in go. classical Japanese here style, rises again Woo! in the HD version there to save go. the land from a terrible Hell's curse. The game. legendary Okami Amaterasu was resurrected, yeah! setting off on a quest with the wandering Spider, artist you can get this game on the switch Woo! overcome challenges Woo! using the power of the gods the oh, celestial God brush me. with mere brush strokes you can make a variety of miracles come to fruition oh 
in the Nintendo Switch version, use touchscreen control in handheld mode. Or use the Joy-Con controller's motion controls in TV mode or tabletop. <laughs> I would love to see, I would love to see myself do <laughs> that motion over and over and over and over, failing over and over and over. Both methods offer an intuitive way to solve puzzles oh, and defeat so cool. your foes. I knew it was inevitable. This Meet is so an eclectic cool. cast. Solve mysteries and slay countless monsters to discover what awaits at your journey's oh, end. Oh yeah. Okami uh. HD launches on Nintendo eShop on Nintendo Switch this summer. Oh uh, yeah. The digging, the pain, the suffering, it's all coming back to me now, guys. Eat up and throw sushi on Nintendo Switch. What? An adventure unlike any other. With conveyor belt sushi action, it's Sushi Striker, the way of Sushido. <laughs> okay, the story what takes the... place after the bitter sushi struggles. What? The bitter what? Did you just say the words bitter sushi struggle? Raised in a world where sushi is forbidden. Mus what? Okay. Sashi must wage all-out conveyor belt sushi battles to defeat the Empire and topple its sushi monopoly. Sushi monopoly? What? And why do you wish they didn't? It was a great game. It should be available on all the consoles. It's a great game. I loved I loved Okami, despite the the, the frustrations I was having with the mouse doing the brush strokes. It got easier with the controller, but but honestly, I love this game. I think it's great addition. The gameplay is deep, but the basics are simple. Just eat more and more sushi to pile up plates of matching colors on a table, then throw them all at your opponent. Mix so you're eating sushi to throw it at your opponents. Is this an eating contest? up your strategies to crush your enemies. If you manage to pull off a special move created by one of your sushi sprites, you may be able to get the upper hand in battle. Did you just say the words sushi sprites? Are we talking about that little creature that just came? Are you trying to make Pokemon uh, a Pokemon universe with sushi? Is that what y'all are doing? Of course, there's a multiplayer mode too. Battling fellow Sushi Strikers online can get intense. Actually, this game looks kind of fun. Sushi Striker, The Way of Sushido launches simultaneously on Nintendo Switch and Nintendo 3DS June 8th. It has a really cool anime uh, soundtrack, of course. <laughs> More travelers, more details, and more launch info. Okay. Okay, Nintendo, let me give you a piece of advice, okay? I know that I am um, just a plebe. I only have 47 followers. All of them are awesome, but I like, I like to ask you a question. Why is it that you're reading? What? Why did it? Why? What? No! No! Why did it go back? Technical difficulties! Technical difficulties! Hold on. Oh no, technical difficulties! No! 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 It fucking did it again! Oh my god. Hold on. Jesus hey. Christ! I'm just trying to say something! Let me talk! More travelers, more details, and more launch info. Hello, this is Masashi Takahashi from Square Enix. Today, I have three news items to share with you. First, I'd like to introduce two more main characters. What lies beyond the horizon? What lies beyond a window breaks? It is the East, and Juliet is the Sun. Meet Tressa the Merchant. She sets off to find her own adventure and gain experience in her job. Her path action is Purchase, which means she can obtain special items from townsfolk. I helped okay. out someone in a bind. Simple as that. Apothecary. 
This and this is Alfin, the apothecary. He embarks on his journey to heal those suffering across the continent. His path action is Inquire. He can warm out info others aren't privy to in standard conversations. I love the look. Next, let's talk about jobs in battle. Actually really Characters like the start look out of with this. a base job, but they can equip an additional job to use in battle. Ooh, okay. For instance, if okay, another character on. like the merchant Tressa equips the dancer job, nice. the combined jobs and abilities expand your strategic Double options. Okay. Finally, we know many of you have been wondering about the release date. Yes, please. The game launches July 13th. This year. Additionally, we will be offering a special edition of the game. Inside, you'll find a pop-up book introducing the eight characters and their places of origin, a helpful map for your adventure, a sound selection CD, and a replica coin based on the in-game currency. This special edition will be released the same day as the regular version of the game. That's actually pretty cool. Your comments have provided the development team with reference points and inspiration as we head into the home stretch of our work with the game. Please look forward to the release of Octopath Traveler. Just, I don't know much about the game, uh, but uh, the style of it looks really cool. Mm. It looks like they're doing like an old turn based, like a Final Fantasy. That's actually pretty cool i i do not no complaints here so far what happens when an otaku assassin enters the game world wait otaku assassin <gasps> the legendary gaming console the death drive mark ii travis touchdown wanders into the game world and embarks on a rampage of epic proportions inside there's an action game racing, puzzles, a total of seven different game titles. With his beam katana in hand, he vows to exterminate every last bug he finds, change his simple yet exhilarating basic attacks, and his arsenal of skill attacks to cut them down to size. A brutal boss lurks at the end of each game. Creatively combine your moves to crush them. Oh, this is awesome! Pass a Joy-Con controller to a friend for co-op multiplayer and partner up with the one and only Badman. Did we mention the adventure mode, which tells a new story? <laughs> this is so awesome. I so, I, I will watch that in a bit. I will watch that in a bit. Obviously th that was all funny. Well, so Travis from like No More Heroes is in like- Travis game. strikes again. No More Heroes launches exclusively uh, on Nintendo Switch in 2018. That is awesome. I hope they make the No More Heroes games. They bring them into, uh, I hope they bring those back. I would love to see Killer7 get remade. In Dark Souls, every uh, challenge is an opportunity. Plus, Amiibo. Here we go. Dark Souls, a world wrought with wow. despair and hope. In the seemingly endless cycle of death, one clean victory becomes a moment you'll never forget. Now you can savor your accomplishments anytime, anywhere, for the first time on console with Nintendo Switch. Before launch, there's going to be a network test so players can try the game. If this will be your first Dark Souls experience, welcome to a brave new world. We have to actually try it. Separately, the Solaire of Astora amiibo will be released. <laughs> with it, you can perform the popular Praise the Sun gesture with reckless abandon. Dark Souls Remastered and the Solaire of Astora amiibo launch on May 25th. Ooh, that's just a few months away. Okay, that is awesome. That is so awesome. Dark Souls Remastered. How was it? How's it going so far? It's going great! It's going absolutely great, man! You're killing it! Well, I have a quick reminder. Did you hear that my Nintendo members can now redeem gold points for digital games and DLC on the Nintendo Switch system? Just choose to use your points during the checkout process in Nintendo eShop for Nintendo Switch really? or on the Nintendo website. Nice. Visit the My Nintendo website Very nice. to learn more. 
Okay, we have more Nintendo Switch headlines, but first, let's shine a nice long spotlight on one title in particular. Oh, I think I know which one this is. Oh, never mind. An all-star roster of Mario series favorites is ready to rally in full-blown tennis battles, using their most tactical, stripped-out shots ever. I actually really like Mario Tennis. It's This is the most fun tennis game ever. I kind of like tennis, but this, I play Mario this Tennis Aces. religiously. There are more than 15 playable characters, each with their own distinct characteristics. The varied play styles on the Nintendo Switch system allow up to four players to step onto the court together. Today, we'll mainly cover the essentials of the refined tennis gameplay. There's a variety of shots to serve up, like a basic shot, top spin, slice, and a lob that'll zoom over your opponent's head, just to name a few. No, Walugi, no! Why not aim and then shoot? Introducing the all-new Zone Shot. Wow! It lets you pinpoint any spot you want to aim at using motion controls and send the ball crashing down. She could actually control. Zone shots are really powerful, so if you get hit by one, your racket will take some damage. Wait, 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 wait. My racket will take damage? As in... As in it's... <laughs> You can break your racket. If Holy your crap. racket takes three hits, it'll break, forcing you to forfeit if it's your last one. Forfeit? It's an instant KO. So you, you're, you, you, you're, you're, you're playing a fighting game as well. But don't give up hope. You can stop a zone shot with a block. Return a shot with perfect timing, and you'll block, protecting ah, your racket. This is like a, this is like a parry, uh, like a, like a fighting game. It's no parry. small feat to nail the timing just right. Wow. That's where zone speed comes into play. Oh, yeah. Using zone speed, the world around you moves in slow motion, allowing you to perform <laughs> incredible feats, like chasing okay. down a quick shot. This is cool. It's no instant win card. Oh man, I'm loving But it makes the it class, a bit easier to block powerful you. zone shots. Yeah. Of course, you can't just spam zone shots and zone speed the whole match. No. You can only initiate these moves by using up some of your energy gauge. The energy gauge it. slowly fills up the longer you keep a rally going. Okay, Mario the fastest was way to fill up your gauge like is with the new outfit. trick shot. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That was pretty cool. If a ball gets away from you, you can jump over to knock it back. It's a risky maneuver. If you don't judge the timing or distance correctly, uh, you may waste your energy or lose a point. No, if Wario, no! If you're successful, your energy gauge will get a big boost. Oh, this is nice. Fill up your gauge, and it's go time. Initiate your oh. ultimate shot. Oh my god, here we go! The special shot. This is the charge up shot! It will eat up your energy in a big way, but this thing can really turn the tide. It may even destroy your opponent's racket in one hit. Nice. However, not even a special shot. Oh man, this is probably the best Mario Tennis version I've seen. Oh man, this is awesome. Uh, guarantees a win. But you know what? It lets you it lets you do uh, get better with blocking. Remember, you can block uh, the shot. Um, you can block it. So. I'm sure that there's a way that you could get extra ra extra tennis rackets. There's always a chance it could be blocked, so watch out. In these intense matches, every move you make presents a risk, and hopefully, a reward. Your energy gauge could be the key to victory. Offense. Will you use it for an offensive zone shot? Or use it for some defensive zone speed? Mm. I really like Let's this. Let's say you go for the zone shot. Will you go for a surefire point? Or will you try to destroy your opponent's racket and run the risk of getting blocked? See, there's... There, they, Non-stop, split-second have... strategies may be the best part about Mario Tennis Aces.
that actually adds an element of of kind of like desperation kind of like uh like because you have like a block gauge when you're playing fighting games as well too so that it don't spam the same moves over and over purists rejoice you can also play using simple rules which means only basic shots are allowed yeah you see you could even you could even uh take away the rules so you could play it like normally Once you connect online. Oh, hold on. Nintendo account required online services and features required online. It's free until the paid Nintendo Switch services calls online September 2008. Good news, guys. Now you have to pay to use Nintendo services. You can play a match with your friends year, or other September. players. Events and online tournaments will be held, allowing you to compete against other players. That's actually great. Matchmaking so is you based on your record during the event. As a participation bonus, you can get special outfits or even additional characters. Ooh. There's also swing mode, which allows you to use your Joy-Con like a tennis racket. <laughs> Do you guys remember the when the Wii remotes were smashing through windows? Do you want that again? Forehand, backhand. Actually, that is... Slice, yeah, but how do you move your character then? Lock. This mode is perfect if you want to play the game casually with your friends and family. We'll just get your body moving. That's actually pretty cool. I'm sorry. That. Oh my god, this is so fun. I, I played this game so much when I was when I was in college. The game offers a refined approach to tennis gameplay, focusing on deep strategic chaos. Wow. Plus, the story mode will offer other twists to the good old game of tennis. The story mode? Oh. <laughs> this is all very cool. Mario so Tennis Aces launches bitch. June 22nd. Ooh. Oh, oh, and one last thing. Oh. As we approach the game's launch, we decided to hold a pre-launch online tournament. Wow! That way, you can try out Mario Tennis Aces for yourself. We'll announce the details at a later date, so please stay tuned. Very nice. Very, very cool. We'll have more on Mario Tennis Aces in the future. Hold on. I need to look at... I need... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, damn, I miss his face. I, he does like a weird face. I missed it. We'll have more on Mario Tennis Aces in the future. Let's continue with some Nintendo Switch headlines. God, he seems so boring next to Satori Wada, man. Captain Toad is ready to explore other systems. Ha! I Captain called Toad it! Treasure I called it! I told you they were gonna be remaking every Wii U game and they're gonna make it on the Switch. This one is a Wii U game. Your tracker is bound for Nintendo Switch. Uh, Explore a variety of tricky yeah, sandbox so style getting, levels inspired by Japanese box card called Hakoniwa. You can rotate the camera and touch the screen for a better view of hidden treasures. This is actually, uh, I've, I've been told and this is a pretty this cool this time, puzzle game. we've included a few Super Mario Odyssey levels too. Now you can explore locales from a variety of kingdoms. Oh, totally Check out so New Donk City. With his treasure hunting gear. By the way, did you know Captain Toad also appeared in Super Mario Odyssey? Yeah. The Nintendo Switch version can be played with a friend by sharing a pair of Joy-Con controllers. While one player controls Captain Toad, the other can assist with things like turnip cover fire, so you can enjoy tracking treasure together. We also plan to release a Nintendo 3DS version with 3D visuals and touchscreen controls. Oh, see, there you go, Saturnite. See, they're making they're they're making it also for the 3DS. They're not forgetting about the 3DS. Clearly, it feels the like there's a box the garden but... right in your hands. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker launches July 13th. Woo! Wow, the Switch is getting a huge lineup. Hey, who turned out the lights? Oh! Oh! Oh, really? Oh! What? Oh, fucking shit, it's Undertale! 
Fuck on. Eventually. Event. Oh, okay. Hold on. What? That's it? That's it? That's all you're gonna give me? It's gonna be coming out? You won't tell me nothing? Aww. Gaming icon crashes hey. Nintendo Switch. <laughs> The impossible isn't possible until it happens. All three original Crash oh, Bandicoot games are debuting God, on a Nintendo Sony system. fanboys must be getting salty. Oh my God, why are they taking my exclusives away? For the very first time, <laughs> spin, jump, and wump this through the trilogy's 100 awesome. plus action platforming levels as Crash and his sister Coco. Everything from the cinematics to the animations to the lush environments has been fully updated since the original games, so they'll look great on your TV or on the go. Ruin Dr. Yeah, Neo Cortex's plans for world domination and save Tana in Crash Bandicoot. For yeah, I did hear, actually did hear that this was this game was coming out on PC. I did hear that. And I heard that there was there was like some PlayStation 4 fanboys that were already hurt about how they were losing their exclusive game. And I'm like, oh, man, you're losing exclusives. I still uh, complete up. Uh, Form an uneasy alliance stupid. with the mad scientist in Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Oh, this is awesome. And stop him in the... Why is Undertale for the Switch, but not for the 3DS? Well, you could definitely run Undertale for the 3DS. That's for sure. Undertale is a very small game. Why is it not on the 3DS? Probably because it wants to focus on getting people to Beetle get the Uka Switch Uka through a battle first. across time in Crash Bandicoot 3 War. I agree, this should be Believe for the it or not, as well too. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is officially making the Wump to Nintendo Switch July 10th. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Never fear, <gasps> Little Nightmares Nine is almost here. Little Nightmares! From award-winning independent developer Tarzier Studios really? comes a charmingly horrific adventure like no other. The puzzle platformer Little Nightmares oh. will trap you in the Maw, a vast vessel of mystery haunted by corrupted this souls. This is so cool. The complete edition on Nintendo on Switch PC. contains two haunting tales in one package. In six and the kids' separate adventures, you must face their childhood fears across all eight chapters, oh. including all past downloadable content. Each room is a cell. Each resident is a threat. Oh, wow. This And both present complex 3D puzzles to master. This, this is so good. Not I... to mention, you can receive the Nintendo Switch exclusive in-game Paku mask by tapping the Pac-Man amiibo figure. Um, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. There is nothing that's more immersion breaking and takes you out of the horror than making things cute and adorable with things that you know you have to buy to get in the game. No. Uh -uh. Little Nightmares Complete Edition releases on May 18th. Oh, this is so awesome. I love this. I love this. I hear that game's actually pretty scary too, so. Oh. South Park is coming to Nintendo Switch. Oh, there we go! We're excited to announce that South Park The Fractured But Whole That's is coming to Nintendo Switch. From the creators yeah. of South Park comes this outrageously offensive superhero adventure that you can play anytime, <laughs> anywhere for the very first time. Customize your avatar. Come on down to South Park and join Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman's superhero team. <laughs> Then have yourself a time with a battle system as surprisingly deep as the show that spawned. Ah, you just let him hit you. Choose a class, level up, build your notoriety, I love this. craft items, go on quests. I don't know if yeah, I would love. I think Insight and Limbo will eventually be coming to the Switch, uh, but uh, yeah, they would totally look great on 3D. They would totally look great. All past DLC will be available for purchase individually or as a part of the Season Pass. Oh, here we go. Season Pass. DLC 1, Danger Deck. And DLC 2, From Dusk Till Casa Bonita will be available at launch. And DLC 3, Bring the Crunch will tell an additional story when it releases later this year. South Park, The Fractured But Whole, releases on Nintendo Switch April 24th. I bet they, they were trying to say The Fractured But 
hole. <laughs> they, they were like very careful saying that word, but hole. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition launches when exactly? Okay, so the critique that I was making was that they keep reading the title, like make the graphic, but then they end up reading the title anyway. It's a pet peeve. I mean, I don't get why they do Let's it. take a quick moment for a release date announcement. The heroes and villains of the Legend of Zelda series are about to spring into action when? once more. This spring. Ooh. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition launches May 18th only on Nintendo Switch. My God, Switch. This, this is a, a pretty impressive first quarter of the year. Nice. ARMS fans, don't miss this. Oh. The ARMS League is pleased to extend an invitation to all you hardcore fans out there who've yeah, been playing the game, game, enjoying all the added characters and stages, and going online to play the new Party Crash mode. Mm. We're happy to announce the ARMS US and Canada Online Open. Remember that game that you thought was going to be really cool, but no one's actually playing it? Prelims will take place in the game's online ranked match mode from March 8th to March 18th. Eight top players will then move on to the online finals March 31st. All finalists will receive a custom art piece created by the development team. Ah. We'll be streaming the event live from Nintendo of America headquarters on our official site. That's Stay tuned really for our cool. social channels for more details in the coming weeks. That's actually really cool. It's just a shame nobody plays this game. And if you're not an ARMS fan just yet, well, we have good news. On March 31st, we'll be hosting a three-day test punch. Download this demo event from Nintendo eShop on Nintendo Switch. Play for free and see what you think of the world's stretchiest fighting game. On March 21st, producer Kosuke Yabuki will discuss the development of ARMS at the Game Developers Conference, and Hisa <coughs> Ashinogami ah. will present separately on the Splatoon franchise, oh, so look me. out for coverage of both. Ooh. Inkopolis News Bulletin, it's update time. This April, Splatoon 2 I is getting an update, Splatoon version 3.0 is coming. Here's a brief and briny taste of what's I really like Splatoon. I enjoy this game. 100 new pieces of gear. That means fresh looks just in time for spring. Plus, more stages. Piranha Pit. Ah, oh, yeah. Camp Triggerfish. I actually love this game so much. And the hottest date spot for the hippest Inklings. Wahoo World. And what? Rank X is here. Rank X is an extreme rank, even higher than S+. More details are coming soon. Once you meet certain conditions, Callie will appear in Octo Canyon. Oh man, I really like it. I really like Splatoon. I, I really love Splatoon. The world Actually, of Splatoon 2 <clears throat> continues to evolve, so don't miss out. Yeah, this is such a fun multiplayer game. It's... It's really, really good. I abs I genuinely love this game. Okay, what's, hey. What? Now, a word from the Squid Research Lab. Check out their latest video. Okay. Yep. What? 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 What?
Squid, spin that shit! Oh, it's an expansion. It's like a story. Okay. At first, I was just like, ugh. <clears throat> At first, that tune was like, ugh, mm, mm. DJ Squid, spin that shit. Mm, mm. Oh. Hello, uh -oh. Squid Research Lab here. So, how was it? You just got a sneak peek at the first paid downloadable content for Splatoon 2, the hefty new single-player mode, Octo Expansion. You'll play as the new character, Agent 8, who looks like an Octoling. She wakes up on the platform of a dark subway station without her memories. Looks like some kind of shady underground test facility. In this massive subterranean world, there are 80 of these test facilities connected by a subway. You'll depart from the station with purpose. A variety of missions await Agent 8 and Ooh. her talents. So this is cool. <clears throat> Expect new stories to unfold, shedding new light on beloved characters. You may think you know everything about the world of Splatoon, but these waters run deep. Okay, this game is Splatoon. Um, for the super elite hardcore gamers, this is Splatoon 2. This is, uh, this is a multiplayer, um, this is mainly a multiplayer game, but, uh, man, Splatoon is, is pretty, pretty freaking hot, pretty freaking awesome. Uh, it looks weird. It's, it's, it's very, uh, it's actually one of the least kid friendly kid friendly games because you know battle itself it's like it's, it's got a pretty neat multiplayer mode it really does yeah man it's it's really good i really it's so fun and playing so this does game. the lore oh well that's your escape opinion. from You're these wrong, twisted but, depths you know, that's your opinion. and you'll be able to join multiplayer <laughs> matches as an octoling we hope you enjoy this fresh perspective I actually really like the squid Since designs, Octa means too. eight in Latin, that means 2018 is the year of the Octoling. Oh, do not do, no, do not, do not do that. You do not do that. You are not, no. This is the year of the dog. This is not the year of the squid, okay? Stop it. Don't do that. Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion will launch this summer. After today's Nintendo Direct, Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion will be available for advanced purchase in Nintendo eShop. With this purchase, Splatoon 2 owners will immediately receive Octo-themed in-game gear to use in battle today. Well, at least, at least this is just adding stuff to the game. It's not taking stuff away from the game and adding it later. Thank you, Squid Research Lab. Hopefully Splatoon 2 will continue. You do know he's not an actual lab, right? The lab is where he works. The lab is where he works. He he's not the lab. You do know you know this, right? Continue to splatter our he's not expectations. The lab. You bet. That's all for today's he's Nintendo not a lab. Direct. Oh, well, actually, we have one more announcement. Oh, I wonder what this is. Please take a look at actually, our last video for the day. I actually know what this is, but I haven't seen it yet, so... Dog. What is it? Platoon? Platoon 3? Already? What, are we getting another Splatoon game? Are we getting another Splatoon game? Is this what, is this? What are we?
okay, I knew this was coming, but I, I did not know what any of that meant. What? 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 This year? This year? Smash is coming out this year. Switch Smash game. This year. This year. This year. <laughs> that was nice. That was whoa oh man super smash brothers you don't know what that is okay it's it's the it's the fighting game where they put all the nintendo characters together where it's like you you, you pick mario and luigi and link and donkey kong and princess zelda and get and, and characters from the from the uh fire emblem games and you play a sonic and you're 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 batting you're 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 it's kind of it's a oh my god uh it's 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 big in the competitive fighting game scene um they're still the biggest fighting game tournament is still having uh the original smash brothers or the smash brothers from like the gamecube <laughs> melee which uh it's gonna be a new smash game i do think it's gonna be a new smash game because the thing is that the link that they're showing there they showed a preview of link uh the link that they have there is not the link that's from uh i don't think it's gonna i think it's gonna be a new game if that were to be the case then if it's if it's a port then nah. but the thing is that they're showing link uh, as he was in Breath of the Wild, and that's not him in the actual game. So either that's DLC, but who knows? Uh, but I I hope it's a new one. And if it's a if if it's a port from the Wii U version, then they're gonna probably make a bunch of enhancements. Yeah, I do know. But the thing is that Smash. Smash Brothers, uh, Smash, I think, let me, let me actually, uh, shut up. I know I'm out of, I know I'm out of drive space. <laughs> well, the thing is that, uh, Spawner is a hardcore lead hacks gamer. He don't play none of this kitty shit. As, that's what he would say. <laughs> but the thing is that I've been playing these games. This is how I grew up playing video games. I play, grew, I play up, I grew up playing Nintendo games. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Super Smash Brothers, okay, so let me see, so, yeah, okay, so here you go, the last, the last, uh, game came out in 2014, so it's been since 2014 that they, that they haven't made a new Smash game. So there is a good possibility this could be a new Smash game. Or they're going to, or this is just an announcement that they're going to be talking more about Smash Brothers later. Uh, but they didn't say they were going to be talking more about 2018. That was definitively uh, an announcement for the new one. So, but anyway, overall impressions uh, of, the, of this Nintendo Direct, uh, strong. Super strong. Uh, I called that they were going to make a lot more Nintendo Wii U ports uh, move over to the Switch, and I was right with uh, Toe's Treasure Tracker coming in and uh, getting more games like Okami. We're getting Undertale, Little Nightmares. Uh, but honest, on, honestly, uh, I'm really 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 happy about this i mean uh i don't know whether we're getting a new smash brothers or it's a port we're getting dark souls remastered we're getting freaking okami and we're getting freaking okami spawner's favorite video game is coming to the switch i'm excited about this this is awesome this is incredible i love this actually really 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 like this this is a very powerful and the 3ds isn't getting forgotten but as you probably notice there is considerably more time dedicated to it uh 
<laughs> um, uh, honestly, um, but yes, it's actually there's a lot more time de uh, dedicated for the Switch. Obviously, the Switch is the more popular console. It's the better selling console. It's going to continue to sell. I am going to be a, a, a Switch owner soon, so I am not drunk. And if I was drunk, you know how, you know that, uh, that honest people tell the truth, right? When they're drunk, right? So that's still the same thing. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. But anyway, uh, that whole thing took, uh, but you don't know if Smash Brothers is a port. We don't know that for sure. They haven't, uh, they haven't said that, um. Actually, let me, let me, let's confirm. Let's actually confirm this. I, I, I think this is going to be a new game. I honestly think this is going to be a new game, but I, but I want, but I do, um, but you know what? Even, even if there are ports, even if they are not enough exclusives, like Luigi's Mansion, the Arma, that, that, uh, Dylan game, I think it's them. Kirby is them. Uh, I mean, a ton of this, uh, Detective Pikachu, yeah, that's kind of lame, but, you know, it's them as well, too. Uh, I mean, there is a ton of stuff that they talked about. I mean, it's them. Now, I do agree. I do agree that uh, while there is a ton of uh, exclusivity, uh, uh, not a lot, a lot of ports coming up, uh, the, there is... Uh, uh, it's a substantial amount of 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 data. I mean, uh, a lot of games, and I think that that's the important thing is that that we're getting games, even if they're ports, even if they're. But you know what? Some people might not have played those games before, so you know it's great to just keep making games. There was a period of time where Nintendo weren't even making their own games. That's what happened with the Wii U. This is good. I don't see a problem with this. I do think there there will be more, but just wait till E3. That's when they're going to be announcing the stuff, the roadmap for the next year. But the fact that they've got all these games coming out now, that's actually really, really cool stuff. I'm trying to find uh, Super Smash. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to figure out if this is like a brand new game here. Okay, so let's go to the let's go to the American site. Okay, there's nothing here except the trailer. Go to their official Twitter. Yeah, yesterday was Mario Day. Yay! Happy Mario Day, everybody. Trying to find uh, information about about it. But regardless, this is a game. Uh, I do hope that this game... I, I, I do hope that this is a brand new game. And, uh, oh, here it is. This is the announcement. But let's see. Let's see if the... Okay, let's actually... Can I, can I see the... I don't want to respond. I just want to... Never mind. Regardless, regardless uh, that... <clears throat> regardless... Regardless, that's, um, it, I mean, regardless of whether it's a port or not, um, Luigi's is a remake. Uh, I do understand that, that, uh, you want new stuff, but you know what? Dark Souls, whether it's a remaster, it's a remaster, uh, that's from a, from an older game. Uh, and, uh, those games are, you know, those games are, are, give them a fresh new coat of paint. They're actually really good themselves here, so. Uh, you gotta excuse me, guys, for just a moment. Uh, I need to take something here.
Uh, I need to take some some day quilt because yeah, we already hit four years, man. It's been four years in between. Mm. Ugh. So, ah, I'm getting sick. I'm sick. I'm getting sick. That's why I took it. Mm. Oh, God. Ugh. Ew. But, <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, that's, that was, I, I thought it was great. Uh, I actually thought it was going to be weaker, uh, but, uh, uh, Dayquil, this is, um, this is for cold and flu. <laughs> I may have to, I have a bit of a cold. So I started getting sick a few days ago, so I'm recovering, but this isn't the tea though. No, my raspberry, this is not my raspberry tea. Uh, I don't have that. But anyway, uh, as we move away from the, from the, from the Nintendo Direct, there is actually more information that I want to talk about. So, um, this one's actually, uh, pretty bad news. Um, and this is a announcement from Drew Caption, Carpation, Carpation, Drew Caption. This is the guy that helped write uh, a majority of what we love about the Mass Effect series. Yeah, my tongue is orange now. It'll be orange for a little bit, so. Mm. Anyway, uh, Drew Caption, Caption, Caption. He's uh he was with BioWare from the beginning. He helped work with Knights of the Old Republic. He worked with Jade Empire, he worked with Mass Effect. And now he's announced that even though he left BioWare and came back, now he's leaving again. He's leaving. There's no there's no word on what's what's happening with this. He doesn't want to steer drama. This spells really bad news for Anthem, which we know it's going to be a massive failure. Uh, shut up. Okay, so here's... Actually, let me, let me take care of that real quick here. Uh, ta -ta -ta. There. Okay. So basically, he's bidding farewell to Bioware, and uh, this is his goodbye letter, and this is going to be very, very interesting. Um, so we're going to read it here. Uh, okay, time for my big announcement. I am leaving Bioware and striking out on new ventures. Yes, it is true. As of Friday, March 2nd, I am no longer an employee at Bioware EA. Good! 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 Some of you might be thinking, wait, that sounds familiar. Yes, this is my second retirement from Bioware. Last time uh, I left, <laughs> I left the focus on my Chaos Born trilogy. This time I'm leaving to pursue a number of other projects, including more original novels, a sci-fi original, an original sci-fi graphic novel. I'm co-creating and freelance gaming work. I know a lot of you are wondering why I'm doing this. For many people, working at Bioware would be their dream job, and they can't imagine anyone stepping away from it. But it was, but it was time for me to move on. For many people, working at Bioware would have been in the past considered to be your dream job. In the past, not now. Everyone who works at Bioware pours their heart and soul into their games they're making. It's creatively demanding and at times exhausting. In the past, I've managed to juggle outside projects with my work at Bioware, but it always took a toll and there's always outside projects I had to pass on because they would represent a conflict of interest with Bioware and EA properties. Um, which is great. You're ambitious. You want to go out and do your own things. And EA is evil, so get away from them. 
So I made the decision to step back again and focus on my freelance work. I'd love to say more about the novels I'm working on or my graphic novel project, but those details will have to be wait a while. Yes, I am using this announcement to tease other future announcements. In marketing, they say that they call that synergy. You know, you don't have to explain that you're shilling your shit. You're already leaving because you want to do more of your own shit. It's a little too late now to be guilty of shilling. <laughs> um, I'm very, uh, uh, I'm not leaving games entirely as of Monday. I'm officially working with Fodback Entertainment and Fox Next Games. I can't say a lot about it, what we're up to, but here's the official Fogbank Entertainment announcement. I am very excited to be a part of the Fogbank, Fogbank team. I've worked with both Daniel and Alex before in my Bioware days, and I really like what they are building. Hmm. He's leaving to go to another place where there were former Bioware employees. Hmm. It's almost as if if Drew is going to a place that's more like Bioware and not like what Bioware is now. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that is. Why that is. Obviously, this release is a bit cryptic, but it's more details of what I'm working on or get announced. I will be sharing them on my Twitter feed and here on the news page on my website. Moving forward, I expect to start making semi-regular posts here and not just about the projects I'm working on. One of the great things about being a freelance writer is I can write about, well, anything. So maybe I, I'll react to politics and sports. Please don't. Please don't. Please, please don't react to politics. Please, please, Drew, I'm, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, Drew, please. I'm begging you. We are so sick of politics. I'm sick of politics. I'm sick of politics on Facebook. I am sick of politics on Twitter. I am sick of politics. Could you please just, just talk about your book? Talk about your games. Talk about your day. Talk about your dog. Don't talk about politics, please. I'm begging you, Drew, Drew, Drew. Drew? Drew? Can you hear me, Drew? Drew, please, don't talk about politics. We have had enough, we have had enough of politics! I am sick to death of politics! I hear it at work! I hear it when I come home! Stop it! And I'm also sick, I don't want to hear, I am sick and sick of politics! I'm sick to the, to the double, to the, to the second power. Uh, 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 oh god, now I'm getting all stuffy again. Ugh, okay. Uh, whew. <sighs> Where was I? And piss off a bunch of people off. Oh, oh, of course you will. Maybe I'll give my opinion of certain movies and TV shows. There you go. See, okay, see, there you go. Talk about stuff. Uh, about stuff that's that's cool. Don't talk about shit. Maybe I'll talk about my golf game and my favorite places to eat in Austin and bore people. You know, you could get people excited about your stuff, not to sway them the minute that you bring it up. <laughs> Maybe I'll write posts about my creative process using mysterious references to unreleased projects. Uh, maybe, definitely, I'll be posting information about any conventions I'll be attending and public appearances, uh, making our interviews or podcasts I'm doing. So there you have it. Please don't email me asking more information about why I'm leaving. Yes, you will. There is no dirty laundry. I'm just waiting to, to air. And please don't ask about any Bioware projects I've been working on. Just because I've left Bioware doesn't mean I'm going to start babbling all their secrets. Oh, why are you a, uh, well, well, of course you wouldn't do that because EA will crush you like a bug. I'm sure people will read more into the statement than there really is, but there is not much I could do about that. I know some people are going to dwell on the past, but that's not my style. I'm looking for a bright future and I hope that at least some of you will enjoy where the journey is heading. You know who's not enjoying this departure? Bioware. Bioware. Screwed. You are screwed, Bioware. 
screwed. You are screwed. Bioware's done. It isn't enough that Bioware is already in the shits because of all of their negative uh, stuff from Andromeda. It isn't enough that they're that is that now they're doing a games as a service for EA that nobody is interested in. It's not bad enough that they're already getting a negative reputation by having stupid people like Anita Sarkeesian show up at Bioware where nobody wanted her to show up there and making it seem that the game is going to be filled with POLITICS! It's not bad enough, but now your lead writer, one of the big members, the more important members of Bioware is gone now. Tell me which part of all of what I just said still gets you hopeful for Anthem. Are you excited for Anthem? Is anyone excited for Anthem? Who wants Anthem? I don't want it. I don't care about Anthem. It's a Bioware game and I don't care about it. Congratulations. You've done it. You've gotten me to not care about what was considered my favorite video game developing company. Good job. Good job, guys. There has been more negative stuff happening. And guess what? These announcements of people leaving is exactly what happened with Andromeda. The people that were originally a part of the of the creative process coming up with the game, they leave. And then the people that get left, they have no idea what they're doing. And that's why you get the game. Badly. So good job, guys. Good job. Andromeda is already dead on arrival. And it's not even done yet. Only thing that could save it is a good showing at E at E3. But guess what? It has to be shown like crazy. I mean, it has to be shown on the Xbox. It has to be shown on um, that stupid EA conf conference that Andrew Wilson and all his cronies are going to be a part of. And they got to show it all over the place. And Anthem, you've got to make Anthem work. Because if this game fails, goodbye Bioware. Goodbye, so long, and thanks for all the fish. Good riddance. You were great. Once in a while, once upon a time, you were great. As for Drew, good luck with your future ventures. And, uh, hey. What, what else can I say? Good luck. Enjoy, enjoy your time away. So, uh, this was actually something that I spotted just a few days ago. Uh, and unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we are still talking about video games and violence as students throw out violent video games to stand in against virtual violence. Video games are being thrown away because they're in violence is in video games. Therefore, video games getting... Is this helping anybody? Okay. All right. In response, this is from Game Rant. In response to the Parkland shooting in Florida, students of the Cushman School in Miami have taken part in a campaign to stop playing violent video games such as first person shooters. Good job. Good job, teachers. Good job, parents. Good job. You completely missed the point. But hey, they're your kids. <laughs> I'm sure they won't ever consider shooting up a school if they stop playing that. Of course. This school is protesting virtual violence and the campaign seeks to help parents raise children in the media era. This campaign echoes President Trump's recent comments on violence connected to the internet, video games, and movies. <laughs> Why are politics following me, guys? Why? 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 Isn't it supporting the company by buying the games and throw them out the window later? Uh, yes. 
actually, you're absolutely right. <laughs> is it buying the games and then throwing them away? You already have given your money to the publisher. So not buying them, I guess, but you've already given them your money. And I'm sorry, but this isn't going to do anything. We'll talk about this in a little bit. Let me continue reading the article. Entitled, The Video Game, The Violent Video Game Toss. This campaign saw students turn in their violent video games last Friday. These students also signed a pledge to never play those type of games again with both parents and school officials supportive of the initiative to protest virtual violence. Several students commented why they were giving up their games which ranged from focusing on schoolwork to contributing to a good cause. Okay, so you're not throwing them away because they cause violence, right? You're, no, this wouldn't have anything to do with peer pressure, right? This wouldn't have anything to do with you getting guilt tripped into doing it, right? Similar to how my, my brother was forced to rip my dad's Eagles Hell Freezes Over CD when they told them that it was part of the devil. It wouldn't have to do anything like that, right? You wouldn't have, it wouldn't be the case that, that you were doing this and then everybody was like, oh, hey, but what about Steve? He owns Call of Duty World War II. Is he going to do it? Because if he's not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. That wouldn't do that. That wouldn't be at all what, what caused. No, this couldn't have been peer pressured in the slightest. Or guilt trip by parents or adults. No, no, no. <laughs> that couldn't possibly be it. Head of the Cushman School, R.V. Balseiro, even commented on his students' participation in the campaign. Quote, We believe every student beyond even Cushman's Blue Gates belongs to each one of us. We believe every student beyond even Cushman's goo belongs to each one of us. An adult is saying that every child outside of their school belongs to him. I don't think you said that correctly. <laughs> These are the students who are going to become the leaders of tomorrow and developing a healthy growth mindset that will come back and contribute positively to this community and beyond becomes a responsibility for every single one of us. Translation, oh, thank God they've gotten rid of the violent video games. Now they could become actual functional adults. Unlike me, who lives in an apartment that's paying in on my own, and going to work every day and never arriving late and is one of the senior leads at where he works and he's growing and he's developing and he's paying all of his bills responsibly and he's not getting into trouble. No, no, no. Someone like me couldn't have possibly done this without video games. Now, if I hadn't gotten rid of all of my video games, I would have been king of the world. Right? Also, fuck you. This school also did a presentation of the importance of limiting screen time, which focused on the research and science behind it. It is unknown whether or not research concerning violent video games or mass shootings was present, but regardless, the video game industry is still scrutinized for its violent depictions. Because the media hates video games, and they want people to focus more on the media than video games. They do whatever they can to paint them in a negative light, including making kids feel that they're going to be violent because of them. Uh, while it was previously reported uh, that Trump wouldn't be meeting with the, the game industry, yes, President Trump is talking to the entire game industry, uh, that meeting may not be happening after all. Uh, spoilers, it... Turns out it actually did happen. While these students are peacefully protesting and adding to the ongoing conversation of virtual violence in the modern era, a student in Chicago was ordered to stay away from violent video games after making a severe threat. 
The ever-increasing duality on the issue may or may not lead to a solution for the United States gun violence problem, but nevertheless, these students in Florida are going to what they believe is to do their part, which is any, which is all anyone can do. No, 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 no. That is not all which anyone can do. No, no, no. They're doing what they're being told to do. They're being told that video games are the reason that these things happen and they're getting guilt tripped into doing this. Hands down. I have been in schools in these situations and when you do something that's slightly like different, they'll, they'll guilt trip you to no end. Also, good job, Chicago, ordered to stay away from violent video games. Huh. I wonder if maybe this kid was delusional. Ugh. I, I just, I just, I, look, I, I would, I would not mind them, but it's, this is kids. This is all too familiar with what I went through. This is fucking children, man. These are kids. I mean, they're being told that that the the things that they like are gonna make them like you got it. You're you're frustrated, and you come home from people making fun of you all day long, and you just want to go and play video games. But then they, your parents say, no, no, you can't play those video games because that'll make you want to go shoot up your school. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? This is 2018. And we're still in this. And guess what? It's backed by freaking science and statistics. Look at that. 80% of mass shooters hadn't, weren't even into video games. So explain to me how they're all be becoming mass shooters with video games. But apparently this was a little more recent uh, from Game Rant. Apparently this is a few days later where President Trump actually met with quote unquote leaders in the video game industry this week to discuss violence in video games and whether games could be having an influence on those who carry out mass shootings. Uh, and it's been disproven by science and it's been disproven by studies, but never mind that. He still has got to push an agenda because Fuck, fuck the facts. <laughs> um, CBS News report that a study by psychologist Patrick Markey saying that the vast majority of mass shooters, about 80% show no interest in video games at all. According to Markey, many people want to draw a correlation between violence, video games, and these extreme acts of violence, but the evidence just isn't there. Uh, quote, it seems like something that should make us safer, so it's, uh, that should make us safer is a totally understandable reaction. The problem is just the science. The data does not back up that they actually have an effect. The science, the data does not back up that they actually have an effect. They go even further, there seems to be a completely opposite effect. That's because Markey also noted that when a new violent video game gets released, crime actually decreases. Why exactly that occurs, Marky cannot explain, but it is certainly a detail worth highlighting. Some argue that violent video games are an influence, while others claim they're an outlet. The study did identify that for a short time after playing a violent video game, a person may show a little more hostile and view of the world as a more dangerous place. However, there's no correlation between the actual real violence and the uh, accounting occurring as a result. Of course, the, we know this to be a fact. It's a fact. It's been debunked and done all the time. It's been done and talked to death, it seems. And it's still not, it's still being talked like that. I mean, the problem is that they're manipulating the people with that shit talk. And if nobody is giving his personal opinion and experience, the mass will believe that bull crap. Yeah. I mean, you got, and also, as I said, there was actually a very cool uh, argument that they said that the news and the new media and all these, they hate video games because it's taking time away from watching them. So, of course, any chance to, that they have to shit talk video games, it's, it's, it works for them. People go out and look for things to be afraid of. And, of course, if, you, if you're afraid of playing video games, then, oh, 
we're here to talk to show you. It's it's I don't I mean I don't know this is this may be, uh, like uh I don't know, I don't know I, I that that may be completely untrue but other than that I just do think. Uh, I tried, but, uh, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I, d I've actually, no, actually, I, I, I actually wanted you to get modded on, uh, on, on Twitch as well too, because you're, you're my, you're like the clip, you're like the media man here, <laughs> but, but anyway, w they've been kind of mentioning, uh, mentioning this. But apparently, yes, they actually met with him. Oh, actually, they're going to meet with him next week, according to this. So apparently this this happened, I guess. But but actually, they said that they were going to talk. No, I actually did. I actually did mean um, maybe Twitch, maybe maybe Discord. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, with all of this, it looks like um, President Trump is going to meet with the heads of the industry next week, but apparently suggested that there are several factors. Uh, he did something about bomb stocks, but he commented on video game violence. Um, apparently after the Newton school shooting, uh, Barack had Joe Biden meet up with a, a couple of people that were focused on violent media, gun control, and mental health. Now, regardless, uh, this is all stuff that's that happened. Now, I don't know if this is just that happened already, but maybe this is it. Did he already meet with them? Or, oh no, this is the same article. Okay. So it says, at the meeting, uh, a video showing numerous scenes of violence was shown. Most notably, the video featured a clip from the No Russia sequence in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, in which the player is in a terrorist attack and innocent civilians. During the meeting, representatives of the Entertainment Software Association uh... Yeah, he's uh yeah, Mr. Mr. Saturday is making some great stuff for us, man. He is he is a patron saint. So, what do I hope for that meeting that happened? Absolutely nothing. I don't think I don't think that we could expect anything from this this president uh let alone do anything about video games. So I do hope that nothing bad happens after that. So, but anyway, moving on to the next bits is if you're a guy, if you've been banned from PUBG, well, the anti-cheat might be banning players at random. I discuss how they banned a bunch, like thousands of players at one time, maybe up to millions. Well, looks like, it's now fixed, but lo looks like Bluehole um, had an update that temporarily prevented some players from accessing their game. <laughs> it says, uh, PUBG's official Twitter account has stated that an error causing random players to be banned has been fixed and that any accounts have been mistakenly banned have been reinstated. However, there are still claims that they're being locked out of the game. It looks like the initial problem lasted about six hours or so, which was caused by an update to the game's anti-cheat software. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Good job, Blue Hole. Um, okay. They know that they have hacker problems, so it says PC players, the detection logic related bug that occurred after today's anti-cheat update has been fixed and all temp bans calls were lifted, uh, except that there are players who are reporting that they're still banned. So good job, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, it says the game banned more than a million players in January. 
including a hundred thousand in a single wave. So yeah, so the anti-cheat problem, the, the the cheating problem is still going on, but the anti-cheating software is broken. So good job. <laughs> okay. Well, at least it's fixed now. So if you're if you got banned from PUBG, you might want to let them know if you're still banned. Because you're not supposed to be. So anyway, uh the one of the only few exclusives that are on the Xbox, uh State of Decay 2, will not feature match microtransactions. Good job! Good job, guys. Just in a few days ago, Undead Labs and Abovers behind the State of Decay titles made the big reveal that the release title and the price, but it seems that they're not done dropping some huge details. In an official live stream earlier today, the development team announced that there will be no microtransaction features in State of Decay 2 at all. The official live stream saw Undead Labs answer some burning questions from the fans, with the microtransaction debacle still very much alive and kicking, the developer stated that there are no plans to add any kind of microtransactions right now. Uh-oh. With that said, as State of Decay is only priced at $30, they did acknowledge that there, means there might be some additional, tra some traditional expansions down the road on, in addition to the already announced Independence and Daybreak DLC add-ons. Okay, awesome. Oh, okay. Very, very nice. They do talk a little bit more about the microtransaction stuff. So there you go. Adding expansions to your $30 game, that's absolutely fine. That's great. That's good. No microtransactions. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're now getting it. Okay. However, one game that will probably have microtransactions is The Division 2. Massive Entertainment announced what an incredible few years it's been for the team here at Massive. We first began to work on Tom Clancy's The Division. We knew we had something special and something we believed in so strongly that we wanted to make sure we got it right. You didn't. And we also knew we couldn't achieve that goal without your help. Since the launch of The Division two years ago, we remained focused on this philosophy. We continue to create more opportunities to interact directly with live streams, ongoing surveys, and social media. We'd also introduce public test servers as a way of getting immediate feedback before integrating major features and changes into the game, which they break. We've never stopped wanting to make The Division better, and our most recent 1.8 update is a statement to that as seen from our overwhelming feedback and support. Most of it must have been negative. <laughs> All of these new features and experiences have made our team better too. Uh, no, not today. I, I, it's, I don't actually work today. It's tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's my day off, but it looks like they need me. So I'm going to be doing at least four hours of overtime. So... Uh, all these new features and experiences may have made our team better too. We're nibbler and better prepared to take action based on feedback. And now more than ever before, we have a clear vision of what's important and what continues to make the division our special experience for so many people. Following our year two year anniversary celebration, we are going to keep supporting that experience with new title updates. That said, we're bringing oh we're always envisioned to the story. In the game we've launched in 2016 and be and as the beginning chapter of a larger saga today we're excited to share more info we're thrilled to announce that we're working on tom Clancy's division 2 and that developments will be led by massive entertainment in collaboration with ubisoft reflections red storm entertainment ubisoft agency ubisoft shanghai and ubisoft bucharest uh translation uh Holy crap, we're doing Assassin's Creed again. Multiple studios. <laughs> With distorted visions all over. So. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. I've got Discord on my phone. <laughs> I'm going to be going out later, but I'll keep... I'll check into it, of course. Um, the Division 2 will be... 
powered by an updated version of the Snowdrop engine that enables us to realize our ambitions for the sequel. But more importantly, we're taking everything we learned over the past two years and applying it. Uh, translation, uh, we promised you a whole bunch of shit in the first game, but now that we have more power and experience, we could actually give it to you in the second game. Which is not bad. I mean, if you guys like The Division, then congrats, you're getting more Division. So, I never played The Division, so I, I, I could care less. But hey, if you do, good. Looks like they're going to be showing The Division at E3 2018 in June. So, look forward to seeing that. And spoiler alerts, I am going to be covering the E3 conferences. So, there is that. So, this is also something that, uh, hey, you know what? If, if, if you guys dig the game, perfect. That's more for you. But, here's something that's interesting. Fortnite is coming to mobile devices. Uh, this is cool. Mr. Bonebreaker! What's up, man? How's it going? Doing good? Yay! We just got, uh, got here. Uh, Fortnite Battle Royale is coming for mobile. Okay, hey Fortnite community. This is from the Fortnite team. Fortnite Battle Royale is coming to mobile devices or phone tablets. Fortnite is the same 100 player game you know from the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Mac. Same gameplay, same map, same content, same weekly updates. How? How could you make... How? Oh, because they want they want everybody they want Fortnite to to continue to dominate, man. If it gives you an opportunity to play this game, like um, they're gonna they're gonna definitely do it. So, oh man, exactly. At least in at least in Fortnite, the microtransactions while they're in there, you know, you could still play the game. You're not getting nerfed by them but you know and mobile that's where it's designed in partnership with our friends at sony battle Ro fortnite battle royale will support cross play and cross progression between playstation 4 pc mac ios and eventually android that's what i'm wondering too I'm wondering how you could play it. And also, how could how does Sony can make it cross progression and cross platform and not be able to bring their their games to be compatible the past games from their past consoles to be compatible with their yeah it's actually going to be completely, yeah, all, across all platforms. You could play with people that are playing on PC. You could play with people that are playing on freaking PlayStation. That's bold. That is absolutely bold. But anyway, the signing, you can sign up at Fortnite.com for the event, uh, uh, inv uh, invite event on iOS. Email invites will start rolling out soon thereafter. When you are invited, you will receive an email with a link to download the game from the App Store. If you do not, don't receive the invite right away. Don't worry, we'll be adding more players in the upcoming months. Okay, to participate, you will need an internet connection, an iOS 11, or at least an iPhone 6S, which I do, uh, iPad mini, iPad Pro, iPad Air 2, iPads and 2017 devices. Well... Guys, I'm, I don't know about you, but that sounds incredible. As it, it's literally too incredible to believe. So, but you know what? Uh, that actually would, yeah. And you have the ability, if you have the newer phones, you, you could actually do like your own emojis now. So that's, that's actually pretty cool. So. Hey, uh, that's 
actually that's actually very very interesting but um but anyway um hey there you go you could play fortnite the most streamed uh and watched a uh, game on on twitch right now and you could watch it just like that boom you can play it on your phone now. <laughs> oh my god. Um hey guys. Did you Did you ever have a problem with EA personally? And I'm not talking about the stuff that we already know about EA. I'm talking about did you really personally have issues with EA? The funny thing is that as as shit as much shit as I talk about them, I actually had an issue in Origin with a game, and they actually helped me pretty quick. So, big up to the support group that, that works at EA. But, honestly, this stuff is does not mean that they're a good company. <laughs> EA is making people verify it's really them to play certain games. This is from Neowind. If you digitally own any game from EA, chances are quite high that you are using the company's very own origin client to run and update them. All that's well and good, but the publisher is seemingly making some changes to the way its games are updated and therefore the way you access them. This email shows an image that pertains to the Neat 2002 Neat for Speed 2 Most Wanted reboot, rather oddly referred to as NSF Most Wanted 2013, as it can be seen in the image, if you don't play it for more than 120 days and then attempt to do so, you will need to verify that it is really you playing the game. out to you because we know that you like to play NSF most wanted 2013 PC we're making some seamless updates to some of our games and it requires a small action from you please click here to ensure that it is really you playing the game starting at 2018 March the 6th you'll need to log into and need for speed most wanted within 120 days or you may get an error message that will stop you from getting into the game. This is to make sure that it is really you trying to get back into the game. If you don't log in the 120 days, you can still get back into the game. Look for your email inbox for an email with the subject, reactivate your access to Need for Speed Most Wanted, confirm that you're trying to get back into the game and you're good to go. Having trouble? Re <laughs> Reach out to us at help.ea.com <laughs> upon clicking the link provided you will be presented with this screen reactivate your access you have successfully verified it was you <laughs> uh, so let me see if I get this let me see if I get this straight if you don't play a game for a few months, you have to tell EA it's really you playing it. You have to tell EA directly that you need EA's permission to play a game that you already paid for. I need a sip of water. Hold on. Let me count the ways that this is so wrong. Okay. For starters, you paid for the game, right? 
So that means you own that game, right? So imagine how mad you would be if you were booted out of your apartment four months for not being in your apartment, but you were still paying the rent. Wouldn't paying the rent be proof that you are the person that's living in the apartment? Also, uh, EA, uh, I hope, I don't know if I could be absolutely wrong, but, but when you buy a game, I think you purchase what's called a, an activation key. You know, a, a game license, you know, that code that's divided by dashes, that's letters and numbers, you know, that certifies that that's you. So you could, you could link the license to your account and your account has your name and your account has your address and your account has your payment information. So wouldn't the game license show if you're playing a game license that belongs to you from your origin account, that would mean it's you, right? Right? Is that not, is that not enough? Is that not, is that not, is that not, it, is that not good enough for you, EA? Is that not good enough for you? Because if you're, if you're still going to lock out people for games, then why on fucking God's green earth do you need to have a DRM in there? Why do you need Origin then? Isn't Origin the, uh, the way that you could make sure that your game, your games are yours? Isn't, isn't that how it works? If you play a game in Steam that you have not played in years, Steam has your information. You bought this game. Why would you make me have to ask you to let me play my game? <laughs> Is it not enough that you guys are the villains of the video game industry, but now you're controlling when people are going to play your games? Are you fucking shitting me? <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. It's like, it's like Spawner said, I am speechless. Because if you're doing this, then why the fuck do we need Origin then? Origin is pointless. Because it, it tells you who's playing the game. You're accessing the account. I mean, I mean, other than maybe you think that the account's getting hacked, but you know what? You have systems in place to avoid that too. My account got hacked and you guys helped me. I changed my password. So you guys have that covered. But the stuff about the games that I own... <laughs> uh, Okay, hold on. The, I, 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 oh my god. I have not played a wood origin for a while. I want to see if this, if this actually works. But not now. I have to try it later because this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> This is beyond bull crap. But hey. This will make you happy. Look at Lord. This is Lord Gaben. Uh, Lord Gaben. Uh, and he's playing with the fact that now he's going to start the, the man I'm still angry from that. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just fucking bullshit. It's just incredible. So yes, Gaben, Lord Gaben, is jealous 
of Nintendo and now has the expertise to develop hardware and software simultaneously. It took you goddamn long enough. So, um, at a presentation uh, of upcoming Dota 2's theme card game Artifact at Valve's offices at Bellevue, Washington, Gabe Newell reiterated that Valve is getting back into developing new games beyond its current roster of multiplayer titles. After talking about Valve's focus on Steam and at hardware during the past several years, which is described as an investment in the future, Newell said, Artifact is the first of several games that are going to be coming from us, so that is good news. Hooray! Valve is going to start shipping games again. Wow, even he, even he thinks his company is a meme. Even he knows how how much they've been telling people that they're making games and they're not. That they're not. And they're like, yeah, no, 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 I know we don't we haven't given you any of the games you wanted, but whatever. Uh I don't know what he means. Uh what I think he means is that there that the focus has been on just creating hardware like the Steam Link and the Steam Controller and offering uh, also uh, Steam, the Steam platform, Steam VR and all that stuff, the Steam Box uh, background, Steam OS. What I think they are going to do is that they're finally themselves, Valve, are making video games to ship to people. So now, like Artifacts, which I'm gonna be talking a little bit more in a bit, it's gonna be available for you. And it's a Valve game. And it's not a remake done, it's not like Black Mesa, it's not like, uh, it's gonna be like Valve actually developing and shipping games that they made. That's what I think it means. That's what I think it means. I, I mean, uh, they're talking about Artifact. So that's a game that they are making. So that would mean, in my opinion, that is what they mean. They're making games now. They're back to making games. Congratulations, Valve. It took you, it took you the better part of a fucking millennium, but you did it. <laughs> awesome. It took you long enough, but that's games, plural. Artifact isn't the only game Valve is working on. In a January uh, 2007 Reddit AMA, Newell did confirm that Valve was working on at least one fully-fledged single-player game. And the following month, in roundtable interviews with PC Gamer, Newell said that Valve was working on three big VR games. Today's statement doesn't make it 100% clear whether Valve has projects in development beyond these previously mentioned games, but it is a possibility. We aren't going to be talking about it today, but sort of the big thing, the new arrow we have in our quiver really is our ability to develop hardware and software simultaneously. By that heading, I only thought that they were going to start working on Portal 3. No, no, no. I, uh, they haven't said what games they're talking about. They're just talking about making games now. So, yeah, then... It seems like, uh, because apparently, according to Gabe, uh, they were focused on making hardware, but their focus on making software and hardware seems to be completely, uh, because they're also supporting Dota 2, they're also supporting uh, the stuff that's happening in Team Fortress, uh, so those games are still going on, they're still making things, uh, but obviously, uh, he says that it's kind of jealous of Nintendo because Nintendo has the capacity of making games, but also has the ability to make hardware as well, too. So I think Newell finally went like, uh, OK, yeah, it, it's it's been a while. We need to we need to talk. So it says like, but the reason that he says that he's kind of jealous of of that. It says, with Valve's new hardware chops, it seems like we could expect more. We've always been a little a little bit jealous of companies like Nintendo. When Miyamoto is sitting down and thinking about the next version of Zelda or Mario, he's thinking about what is the controller is going to look like, what sort of graphics and other capabilities. He could introduce new capabilities like motion input because he con controls both of those things. 
and he can make the hardware look as good as possible because he's designing the software at the same time that it's really going to take advantage of it. So that's the something that I've been jealous of and that's something that you'll see us taking advantage of subsequently. Yeah. Well, uh, there you go. Gabe Newell has finally summoned his inner Miyamoto and they're going to start developing software uh, as well as hardware. Good. I know it's not going to be Portal 3. I know it's not going to be Team Fortress 3. I know it's not going to be Left 4 Dead 3. Half-Life 3. In, but you know what? Good. Valve is making games again. Good. Why did you stop? Why did you feel the need to stop making video games? Maybe it's because you don't need to make them anymore because Steam is making money hand over fist for you, Gabe. But uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that he decided to wake up from his fucking coma and now he decided uh, that he was jealous enough of Shigeru Miyamoto that he was going to make video games. So congrats. Finally. The fat man is back. <laughs> so, of course, the he the game that he was talking about most is obviously uh, the game Artifact. Uh, that is a no. It says it's going to feature novel mechanics, but it's not free to play. Apparently, uh, sat down with members at the gaming press. Gabe Newell. He talked about the game. He he first announced it in the international. And the presentation, this is the actual first screenshots of the actual game, which we will show you. So, uh, all right, Mr. Saturday Night. So this is going to be like a Dota. This is going to be like a Dota 2 themed card game. It looks, it, it actually looks really nice, actually. It's kind of like Hearthstone. It's a fully 3D board. I, uh, I think that this... I mean, I don't know if there's too much competition. I mean, because you got Hearthstone, you got uh, Gwent, um, you've got the Elder Scrolls card game, and then you've got this. So, this is a game being done by Valve, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a hallucination. Valve actually made this. <laughs> oh my god, the art, the art looks great. This is nice. Oh my god, I love this art. I love the card art. Oh man. That's something that I'm a sucker for. I love card art. Yeah. Yeah, man. The game will feature high production values, novel mechanics, such as a shopping phase, and an AI that teaches the players how to play. Newell also stated that opening packs and building your pack will be a social and competitive experience. Additionally, Artifact will feature a marketplace and workshop, much like the one in Dota 2, player where uh, that Dota 2 players can buy and sell in-game items. And, uh, and, and the deck, but there are going to be heroes in Artifact that are new. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're planning that some of those will make their way back to Dota in the future. Maybe. Man, it's only 10 seconds. Darn. But yeah, this is a game. That's being done by Valve. Citation has been provided. <laughs> it is another competitive card game, uh, but here it is. Uh, but, but there's more information. It says, Newell also clarified that Artifact is not a Dota 2 card game, but rather a game that uses Dota as a base because of convenience. It's not... It's not a competitive card game that has Dota 2 in it, but it's going to use Dota. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, he went on to say that Artifact will create a lot of content for Dota 2, including new heroes that will appear in Dota. Much like Dota, 
Newell says Artifact will not have a single player campaign, but rather focus on the play of human opponents. Artifact is currently in closed beta, available only to industry members and TCG professionals. The presentation revealed that Artifact will be released to the public at the end of 2018. With the first tournament in quarter 2019, the game will hit iOS and Android in mid-19 and will be the first Source 2 title to run on mobile devices. So, wait. Is Artifact not going to come to the... It's, it's going to come to the PC, right? This isn't a... This isn't a... Hmm. But there you go, guys. There you go. Um, uh, Valve is making games again. Awesome. I'm going to close a couple of these here because uh, I think we're a little over time here. So what we're going to do is... Uh, a couple of these things were already talked about. Um, closing a couple of things here. One quick second here. Yeah, a lot of these videos are stuff that they discussed in the... Anyway. Here's something uh talk about here. I'm going to switch to a video. And this is talking about Near Automata. Oh, oh, I know what this the problem is. Okay, I hit two and it ex... Never mind. This is about Nier Automata. <laughs> the fuck? Uh... Why are you still hiding your face? I'm the Nier Automata game director of but you can't read because you're wearing that stupid moon robot nightmare fuel. I can't deal with you now, Yoko. I am too sick for this. えっと、このプロジェクトを始めた当時はこんな今たくさんのご支持をいただけるのは想像もしませんでした。皆様からのお言葉ってI cannot believe that Near Automata has been out for a year already. I just got that game. No, I'm pretty sure he doesn't walk around. Everybody knows how he looks like, but for some reason he doesn't want... He's apparently supposed to be some weirdo, eccentric, weirdo-ass, weirdo motherfucker, and he... <laughs> but, but you know what? Whatever makes him happy. It, it sounds like he has a lot of confidence wearing that helmet. Fan events. Is that it? What? 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 What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Anyway. Oh, okay. See, every time I hit two to tr to change transition, <laughs> it fucking accelerates the the video forward. To thank some of our most active and long-term map editors, we invited them to the Montreal Far Cry Studio this December. Yo, wee wee, bo bom, ooh, hot, hot French wee wee girl, wee wee. Here they have the chance to test in exclusivity the map editor and to meet with the arcade developers. I'm sorry, the, the map what? 
the map editor. It was also the occasion for them to play around with the map editor, discover new features, but also to give us some feedback on the whole arcade experience. Oh, this My is impressions, awesome. I'm blown away by the, uh, by the map editor. Just the amount of customization that can be done now in maps is, is massively improved. There's no limitation for me at this moment when I look at the Far Cry 5 map editor. It's pretty awesome, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like anything was really stripped from this. It feels like things were added in oh, wow, over and above this is and beyond. Awesome. The team has been really responsive to any questions and concerns. Hold on! we've had. Being a native of Montana, you know, I, I'm going to draw a lot from just my knowledge of, of the landscape there to sort of try oh, to recreate well, my neighborhood this. from growing up. I, I do believe that it's definitely the best editor that I've actually had to play with, for sure. I like this. I like this. I, that dude reminded me of a uh of Hodor. I, I know it's mean. I know it's absolutely mean, but is that <laughs> I know, I know. I I I I went crazy. Um um Coming soon to a video to a Fika playthrough near you. This is apparently an inspiration from Lucid Dream Simulator. Or LSD. Oh man. Oh my god. What do you think? Okay, zero north, zero west. Now available! Oh, okay, hold on. So, this is, uh, this is uh, a game that's apparently inspired by Lucid Dream Simulator. Which, I thought it was LSD, but apparently... But yes. <laughs> uh, as usual. <laughs> but you know what? You could always go back and... Yeah, I thought it was LS. That, no, that was actually uh, zero, zero north, zero west. It's inspired by LSD, but um, but yeah, let me let me look for it. Um, hello, game. Okay, zero north. Do I really have to type it zero? Oh, okay, here we go. Here it is. Yeah, this is, um... This is the game. This is the game that... Uh, let me expand it here. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Oh my god, this is trippy, man. This is all... This is all trippy, man. This is the world... This is the world between worlds. game is already out. It's from this, this developer called Color Fiction. I'll tell you what, those of you who suffer from, from motion sickness or, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to wish list this and, uh, follow the announcements and, uh, follow up.
This game doesn't appear look like other things you've played in the past. As such, we don't have much information on whether or not you might be interested. <laughs> awesome. Oh man. So I wonder if this is this is is this a walking simulator or is this like uh Apsu I don't know. If this is gonna be like a walking simulator Apparently it's supposed it's more like a casual indie game, but you know what? It's zero north, zero west. I'm pretty sure. Uh so we'll 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 have to take a look here. So who, what do you guys think? You guys think I should I should play uh Zero North Zero West? It's a game that's not really well known. Uh I don't know about this game, but you know what? I'm I'm kind of interested in it. So so that that would be that would be it. That was the that was a I kind of am I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is a walking simulator now because LSD wasn't a walking simulator either. Uh it's not uh it, I mean LSD is is not one of those like it's a game that you're just sort of just hopping from one from one thing to another. Um, anti chamber is very similar to that. So maybe I'll, I'll create a WTF stream. <laughs> but you know what? There you go. Um, there you go. It's uh, uh, maybe I'll play it. Maybe not. But there you go. Uh, but guys, that was the end of the that was the last uh, bit of information. A lot of it was taken by the Nintendo Direct. That's why I decided to start a half an hour earlier. So I hope that you guys like that. Um, I'm not sure if Spawner did because I don't think he likes Nintendo games. But, but you know, I mean, he likes Pokemon. Pokemon is a good game. And Pokemon uh, and Nintendo has had some of Square Enix best games come out there first. I mean, we're talking about uh, like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy 3, what it was actually Final Fantasy 6. It got popularized because of that um secret of mana i mean yeah i love nintendo and i am still getting a, a twitch uh a twitch <laughs> a switch i'm getting a switch so so today um so tomorrow after i'm done working my four hours of overtime i will uh i will go ahead and do my taxes and hopefully i'll get my return soon and i'll be able to make those changes happen so as i could get a i could get a capture card uh and then i could i could uh play the games on the pc um without the lag so i'm thinking about getting an hd60 there is this cool set that includes the hd60 4k but i don't think my computer is adequate it has enough to to work it so i have to look into it more deep here so i have to wait till i get my my return so that way, if I, I'll buy a capture device, I'll buy a PlayStation 4 or a Switch, and I'll see if I could get myself a better chair because I do want uh, either either a gaming chair, either a gaming chair, or it's going to be a, a more comfortable chair because I don't this chair causes issues for my back. So, uh, oh yeah, uh, Dark Souls remastered. I do agree. That's uh coming from a person who's currently still playing Dark Souls 3. Uh, Smash Brothers has always been one of my favorite games. I play it on the on the 3DS all the time. So I am very looking, much very looking forward to this game. So I'm very much looking forward to it. I am really, really, really excited about it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I think that will be it. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and get myself some lunch. Uh, I will not be streaming today after this because I'm going to be going to Clearwater again to go see uh, WWE Fastlane with my friend Matt. I'm going to go finding some some cables. <laughs> um uh yeah i uh this this I, if you saw the nintendo direct i didn't see a single game in there where i thought wow this isn't a bad idea uh hell even 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 uh no more heroes is getting like it's game sort of like fury a game kind of like fury but it's uh but it's kind of like it's got its own like its own game like i i 
I actually really like that. But thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saturday Night. Uh, I will try uh, to have a good meal here. So, But anyway, guys, uh, I thank you so much for watching. That's the end of the stream. Uh, if you guys like this, share it with people. Have them see my my stuff check out the latest clips that uh saturday night uh i'm sure that him and spawner are already adding them to the discord clips area so uh if you haven't uh please do that uh because i i do want to see those clips <laughs> uh can't i join one of the normal live casts uh it doesn't have to be every single time like once a month Oh, already ahead of oh, oh, he's done it. Yes, he has. Of course, he's already added them. Sp uh, Saturday night. Uh, I'm gonna make you a, a mod. How do you do? How do you do that on? How do you do that on 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 Twitch? How do you do that on Twitch? And how do you do that on on on? I, I think it's just a matter of making you uh, getting you the role. Yeah, the thing is that. I bought this, I bought this, uh, but the thing is that this is a dual DVID, uh, a DVID dual link. Uh, and unfortunately my, my ultra wide monitor does not have a port for this. I want to be able to play my games at 144 Hertz. Uh, however, uh, without being able to plug this in to my video card, I have to either get an HDMI to DVI D dual link or I have to get a display port. If I get a display port today, I'll just end up giving this back to Amazon, which I still lose money because I have to pay a part of what I, of the refund has to go into the shipping. So I'll get three bucks back. So that's okay. But anyway, I am going to do that. And uh, because I, I want, I feel like I'm missing out on this, on this, on this monitor. Yeah, it's a dual link. Uh, uh, but, uh, I don't have the ability to be able to, I don't have the ability to be able to use it yet. So I'll take this cable with me, uh, to see if I can have somebody, uh, find me something that I could, because the problem is that getting an adapter, I want it to actually, um, uh, actually stream, uh, because these are for, for the higher resolution ones. So but if not, I'll just get a dual a display port cable and uh, I'll use that as a display port. So anyway, but anyway, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to be heading out. I'm going to be having some lunch and then I'm going to head out to Clearwater and take care of this cable. Watch uh, WWE Fastlane. So you guys take it easy. I hope that you guys liked today's stream. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow. I'd say around 2, maybe 3 p.m. Eastern because I'm going to be working tomorrow. So, so much for having a day off. But you know what? I get overtime, so that's good. I get some OT uh, and uh, I like I like working there, so I don't mind helping out, you know, putting down uh, to be able to work that day. So... Anyway, uh, you guys have a great day, uh, and uh, Saturday night I'll 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 figure I'll I think I, I know how to make your mod into uh, into into Discord, so I'll do that. And uh, also, uh, if you wanna if you're interested in being a Twitch moderator, let me know, and I'll add you as well too because you've been awesome. You have made me emojis, you made me clips. I don't know what else to say, man. This this. It is, you're, you're just an awesome human being, man. You, uh, but Mr. Boney, have a great day as well, too. You guys have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay awesome. Peace out, guys. Bye!